probably the last type of limit that we're going to have to deal with uh, are, are limits that involve absolute values. Um, and something I think it's really important for you guys to recognize is that absolute value functions are, are really just piecewise functions. Um, evaluating the limit of an absolute value is generally best done by thinking about the thing as a piecewise function, or at least represent, or at least thinking that there's a different way to represent that absolute value thing. Because the reality is, if if you have an expression like the absolute value of x plus two divided by x plus two, you are not allowed to cancel those x plus twos because they're not the same. One of them is an absolute value. One of them is is a, a nice normal x plus two. Those are not the same function. And so we need, we effectively need some way to get rid of absolute value bars so that we can work with it, right? So as this first example, I want us to take a minute and think about how you can rewrite this thing as a piecewise function, right? And, and even think about the graph of x, of the absolute value of x for a minute. Like, think about that for a minute. Like, that thing clearly has two parts. We could say that this function is, well, let's see here. This part over here just looks like the graph of x. So it looks like this function is x when x is greater than or equal to 0. Right? And the other half of it here appears to be negative x when x is less than 0. And I don't want to just walk on for that. I want you to actually understand what's happening here. Here's the deal. If the thing inside of the absolute value is positive, and this is really important, so make sure you've got your brain turned on. If the thing inside of the absolute value is positive, then what's the absolute value bar really doing? It's doing nothing, right? Which means I don't need it. So if the thing inside the absolute value bar is positive, you can just get rid of the absolute value bars. Now this is the tricky part, and this is the part that a lot of people have trouble with, so you may need to pause and listen to this a couple times. If the thing inside of there is negative, so notice over here I wrote x is less than zero. If x is negative, what does the absolute value do? The absolute value makes it positive. But I want you to think for a minute. How can we take something negative and make it positive? Couldn't we just write a negative in front of that thing? Because this right here is basically saying, take the opposite of negative x. And you might be wondering, like, whoa, whoa, whoa how do I know x is negative? I know x is negative because I said right here, x has to be less than zero, right? So the short of it is, if the thing inside the absolute value is positive, you can just get rid of the bars. If the thing inside the absolute value is negative, you can get rid of the bars by supplying your own negative to cancel with the negative that it already has. That's how we're going to deal with absolute values. Okay, so I've got another one that I want to try here that, that may require a little bit more work, so let's, let's try and think through this one, right? I want us to rewrite the absolute value of x minus 4 as a piecewise function. So I'm going to have f of x equals huge bracket thing. Now, the first question, and this is something I want you to pause the video and think about, when, in other words, for what x values, when is the inside of this positive? When will x minus 4 be positive? Hopefully you've recognized that that is when x is greater than 4. And I'm going to put x is greater than or equal to 4. Right. x is greater than or equal to 4 will make the thing inside of here positive or 0. And so what does the absolute value do to something that's positive or 0? It does nothing to it. So I'm going to leave this as x minus 4. Now, what happens in the other case when x is less than 4? What happens to the inside of this thing when x is less than 4? Well, the inside of it is negative. And so how, what does the absolute value do? The absolute value makes it positive. And so what we can do is we can put negative x minus 4. I'm recognizing that in this case, x minus 4 is already going to be negative. So supplying another negative will make it positive. Okay. So this is me rewriting this as a piecewise function. Now, when I start doing limits, I might not actually write them as piecewise functions. But instead, I'm going to be thinking about, hey, do I need the absolute value bars? How can I get rid of the absolute value bars? And, and these, these problems are going to be kind of magical, so I hope you guys get a chance to appreciate them. So in this case, when I take the limit as x approaches 5 from the right, right I'm approaching 5 from the right, what kind of number am I plugging in? Right? Hopefully you understand I'm plugging in a number that's bigger than 5. So what do you know about the inside of this absolute value bar? 
inside of this absolute value will be positive, which means I don't really need the absolute value bars. Now, if this had been the limit as x approaches 5, just plain 5, and, you know, I could be from the left, I could be from the right, I don't know that. But because I'm approaching from the right, I don't need the absolute value bars on the top. Okay? Well, awesome. Now that the absolute value bars are gone, these expressions will eliminate with one another, and all I'll have left is 1. The limit as x approaches 5 from the right is 1. Right? Now let's take a look at the problem on the right, the blue problem. And in this case, I'm approaching from the left. I want you guys to pause the video and try this one on your own. If I'm approaching far from the left, it means that the thing inside of here is negative. And so I can get rid of the absolute value bars by expressing, okay, I understand that's going to be a negative. I will supply my own negative to sort of do the job of the absolute value. I'll end up with this. But just like last time, we're excited because now the absolute value bars are gone. These two things are opposites of one another and will cancel. And all I have left is negative 1. This limit from the left approaches negative 1. Right? And that's the end of this question, but I suppose I could ask, now that I've done this, can you tell me what the limit as x approaches 5, the double-sided limit, of the absolute value of x minus 5 over x minus 5 is? Hopefully you recognize that that double-sided limit does not exist, because the two values that I got were different from one another. There's so here we have an example of one of those double-sided limits. Right? This is just a limit as x approaches 4. Um, and, and so I'll start to give you guys a start for this problem. For this problem, you're going to need to evaluate the two one-sided limits. We're going to need to do the limit as x approaches 4 from the left of the absolute value of x squared minus 16 over x minus 4. And then I'm also going to have to do the limit as x approaches 4 from the right of the absolute value of x squared minus 16 all over x minus 4. Okay. Um, I'd really like you to try and take the first step on both of these. I want you to, to sort of do what you need to do to eliminate the absolute value signs from these problems, um, and then unpause the video and make sure you got those the same as me, and then you can finish evaluating those problems on your own. So for the left one, if I'm approaching 4 from the left, I'm plugging in a number smaller than 4, it means x squared is going to be smaller than 16, which means the top of this is going to be negative. Because of that, I'm going to have to write the limit as x approaches 4 from the left of negative x squared minus 16 all over x minus 4. That's your first step on that one. Now on the other one, the first step, if I'm plugging in something bigger than 4, x squared will be bigger than 16, that minus 16 will be positive, which means I, I just plain don't need the absolute value bars. I can just write this as x squared minus 16 over x minus 4. Okay. So hopefully you got those first steps right now. Go through and actually evaluate these things and figure out what your answer is. So in both of these cases, when I attempt to evaluate for the expression that I have, I end up with 0 over 0, which means I'm going to have to try harder. Right. So in order to do that, the limit as x approaches 4 from the left, negative, I can factor the top as x plus 4, x minus 4 which is great, because with that x minus 4 in the denominator, these will disappear. And now I can attempt to evaluate with my 4. When I plug that 4 in, I end up with negative 8 for my left-hand limit. Okay? And I suppose I shouldn't have put a box there, because that's not the final answer. That's just the, the one-sided limit. Okay? For the other one, um, in this case, I'm just going to uh, simplify, or rather factor the numerator. Same deal. I end up with x plus 4 times x minus 4, all over x minus 4. Again, the x minus 4s, you know, will divide out. When I attempt to evaluate by substituting in the 4, on this one I end up with positive 8. So from the left, negative 8. From the right, positive 8. And so the final answer here is that this limit does not exist, because the two one-sided limits were not equal. This is going to be our strategy for all of our absolute value problems.